Breaking news we've been following all afternoon out of the East County. A fast-growing wildfire is forcing evacuations near Campo. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. In the most recent update we received from firefighters, the fire had burned around 280 acres. It was first reported about three hours ago off of La Posta Road, just south of Interstate 8. We're told there is a threat to buildings in that area. This is a live look from Chopper 8 right now. Earlier you could see flames along with huge plumes of smoke. As we can see, just compared to even an hour ago, much less. We don't see nearly as much smoke. We're not seeing the flames that we saw in the last couple of hours. It's looking like things are, are, are going a little bit better right now. We are waiting for an official update. We do know there are several evacuation orders in place right now. The Golden Acorn Casino has been designated the temporary evacuation point. We have a crew on the way. We'll get you the latest as soon as we know more. But right now, our visual from Chopper 8, things look pretty good out there. Yeah, much better news than what we saw an hour ago. Now, for more on the heat, uh, and it is pretty hot out there in Campo, let's turn out to Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis. Yeah, it gives us a look at the conditions out there impacting that fire right now. Carlene? That's right. We're talking about hot, dry conditions, and Campo has been dealing with that for days, going all the way back to last week. It has been back-to-back-to-back record-breaking days for that city. You're talking about a current temperature of 93 degrees. Relative humidity is at 14 percent. Wind speeds, we did have a gust that was in the teens within the last couple of hours. It's come down, and it's going to continue to do so all the way into later on tonight. So we're still looking at those hot, dry conditions because of that area of high pressure that has been overhead just towards the east of us. Excessive heat warnings, including for Campo, will continue all the way until 8 p.m. tonight. So we are still dealing with the heat out there, at least to kick off the week, but things are going to be changing up in the forecast. Also, that heat advisory across the mountains that we've been seeing. As mentioned, we did have some record heat when it came to Campo over the weekend, 105, and today, 100 in two broke the previous record for Campo set back on this day and night or excuse me uh, at 99 degrees previously and that was back in 2023. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at more details on that heat and how long it's going to stick around coming up. Marcella. Thanks Carlene and stay with CBS 8 for the very latest on this fire and weather conditions. We will have all updates posted on CBS 8.com. You can also follow us on social media or download our free CBS 8 plus streaming app on uh, Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. Our other top story tonight, Padres fans, who already had a low opinion of Dodgers fans, if we're being honest, well, they have new material to work with now following last night's big win, and they're hopeful the team will continue to beat L.A. Oh, yes. The Friars play their next game in the National League Division Series about 24 hours from now, and it will be home here at Petco Park. Tonight we have team coverage. CBS 8's Jake Gariani is standing by with more on how the team is feeling after last night's big win. Well, let's start things out with CBS 8's Steve Price, who's outside Petco Park, and he has more on that ugly scene last night at Dodger Stadium where fans started to throw baseballs at Jurickson Profire. Steve, what are they saying tonight? Well, Carlo and Marcella, Padres fans are saying what happened last night was extremely dangerous. And quite frankly, many Dodgers fans agree, not only calling it dangerous, but also embarrassing. New for you tonight, I have some video that shows the moments that led up to what happened right before those baseballs were thrown. I also had a chance to talk to the guy who was in the middle of the controversy. First one to Mookie Betts. It all started with this play in the first inning. Jerkson Profar goes into the stands, robbing Mookie Betts of a home run by taking the ball out of the hands of Dodgers fan Mario Zazueta. I reached to my left, reaching over my girlfriend, and I felt the ball, and then I'm looking for the ball, and as I looked back, Profar is staring right at me, and he's jumping up and down, and I was just like, he caught it. Mookie Betts is rounding the bases, thinking that it's a home run. Mario says he may not have caught the ball, but he definitely caught a lot of grief from Dodgers fans, blaming him for costing their team a home run. You should have done this, you should have done that. I'm like, really? In the spur of the moment, you don't even think. You're just trying to catch a ball. Another fan yelled at Profar during the game that he owed Mario a ball for taking the home run out of his hands. So in the seventh inning, Profar obliged. And as he's walking over, I'm like, Profar, I said, I don't want it. I said, I don't want it. I'm going to chuck it. And he's coming at me grinning. 
he hands me the ball. And as you can see in the video, I grabbed it and I just chucked it. You can also see in the video that Mario threw his ball away from the players. You can see in the video, he's chuckling. But then the unfortunate part after that, maybe a few seconds later, a ball came from my right in his direction, which was not cool. And then a second ball from the pavilion came in his direction. So I get why he was upset. Profar was so mad his teammates had to calm him down and the umpire stopped the game for about 10 minutes. Fans also threw trash near Fernando Tatis. Mario's message to fellow Dodgers fans, stay classy. We are a very proud organization. We're a very proud, loyal base. Act like we've been there before because we have been there before. We just need to think better, think better of ourselves and better choices, make better choices in life. <laughs> Speaking of choices, I asked Mario if he now wishes he kept Profar's gift. If I keep the ball, I'm still public enemy number one. How did you keep the ball from him? He, he took it from you. You're a San Diego fan. I, it was a lose-lose situation, but I told him I'm going to chuck it if you give it to me, and I did. Uh, Mario, we will take you as a Padres fan. By the way, if you watch a lot of baseball, you probably know that when an away team hits a home run, it's not uncommon for the home team fans to throw the ball back onto the field. So Mario didn't really think what he did was anything wrong, and he purposely threw it away from other players. That said, security didn't agree, and they did kick him out of the game. He's not sure if the people who threw the other baseballs were also kicked out. Carlo and Marcella? Thanks, Steve. And Padres fans, they are very enthusiastic and I think pretty confident, too, about home games three and four against the Dodgers. CBSA's Jake Garrietti joins us now for what we can expect to see as the series continues. Let's hope uh, they play here at home. Everyone's well behaved and they get the nice clean win. Yeah, a couple of them, right? Just get two of them and call it a series. Don't yes. go back to L.A. Don't That's the best way to LA. do this. That's the easiest, most simple yep. way to yep. do this. There was a lot going on last night. Let's yeah. be honest. I mean, between everything you just saw with the baseballs and record-setting playoff home runs and great pitching from you, Darvish, that game had it all, and it had your blood pumping if you were a Padre fan or a Dodger fan. But a huge win for San Diego to split up there, break the serve, if you will, and get the 10-2 victory. Now, I mentioned all those home runs. Well, Fernando Tatis Jr. had two of them. We're going to talk more about Fernando in just a second. It's an off day from the games for the Padres and the Dodgers, but it was a workout down at Petco Park today. That is where we find our John Howard live on the field at Petco Park. John, Fernando has been on an absolute tear in these playoffs. I know you got more on him. Yeah, absolutely, Jake. You know, the, the national media hyped up the series as the debut of Shohei Otani. First time he's playing in the postseason. But it's really been Fernando Tatis Jr. who's stolen the limelight in four playoff games the whole postseason. Nine of 14. That's a 643 batting average. Uh, nine hits. He has scored seven times in four games. He's also drawn three walks and been hit by a pitch. It's just amazing what... Fernando Tatis Jr. has done. He also, being the showman that he is, has had a lot of fun with the fans, both here at Petco Park and at Dodger Stadium. And the Dodger Stadium fans may not appreciate him all that much, but a showman will be a showman, and Fernando is that. We talked to some of the guys about the performance of Fernando during this postseason, and they say, hey, that's just Fernando being Fernando. On fire, he's been carrying this team, you know, since this is a business series. And um, you know, it's been it's been great having him. You know, we, we all know what he was capable of, and you know, he d doesn't uh, you know seem to uh, shy away from anything. So, um, you know, for us to get to where we want to get to, uh, you know, he's a, he's a big part of that. He's, he's been killing the ball, you know, and, and and that's him. You know, the the bigger the stage, the 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 better he plays. You know, he grew up in that in that atmosphere down in the DR and those you know hectic high leverage games down there where it's you know a lot like it was last night and uh, I think that's where he thrives you know he's an incredible ball player and he seems to be able to, to zero it in and and lock in and show his best when it matters. And Fernando's got a lot of personality and he's got the game to back it up so can't wait for the next two ball games games three and four right here at Petco Park by the way as I speak uh, the Dodgers are in the middle of their uh, workout a large international media contingent uh, wanting to focus obviously on Shohei Otani. They should have been out here getting Fernando Tatis. But anyway, Jake, that's all I got for now. Coming up at 650 in sports, a look at Michael King, the starting pitcher for tomorrow. He was rock solid in the wild card series against the Braves. Let's go back to you now. All right.
much, Jan. Thank you so much. Great work. People forget this is the first time Fernando's played in the playoffs in front of fans. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets to soak in that atmosphere. I mean, Fernando's just built for moments like this. You need your stars to step up. Machado and Tatis mm -hmm. have. Mookie Betts is mm -hmm. over the last two post seasons. It's going to be hard to beat the Padres uh, with that kind of. It's crazy to see what he's done in the postseason or not done for a former MVP and all that. It's, I mean, if the Dodgers want any chance in this series, he better step it up soon. Or I think the Padres will keep him down. Yeah, let's, not, let's, not, let's go with that. Energy yeah. into the air. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Thanks.